In Matthew chapter 7, Jesus would continue his Sermon on the Mount. He would talk about many different topics, and we're going to talk about really what it looks like to ask God, what it looks like to seek God, and what it looks like to knock so that the door will be open to us. We're going to dive back into the scripture, Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. He says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and and the door will be opened unto you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. And Jesus would give this powerful example, and I'm gonna tie in some other areas of the scripture to this, some principles found in the word, but he gives this really cool example that we need to ponder on and really pray through because sometimes we have a wrong perspective of God. And he says, which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, we'll give him a snake. I think of my daughter, Sophia. She's she's seven months old. And I, I just, I see her smile. I see the joy that she has in the scripture. Now that I'm a father, really comes alive to me. There, no, no good thing would I withhold from her. The scripture says no good thing would he withhold from them that walk uprightly. There is nothing that I would withhold from my love, from my daughter. If she needed it, if she asked for it, and I could provide it, and it was good for her, I would give it to her. And really what the scripture is saying is this. If we, verse 11, though you are evil, if we as humans who make mistakes, who sin and have our own issues, if we who are evil know how to give good gifts to our kids, how much more does the Father who is perfect, who is, who is, who is flawless, how much more does he give good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything, verse 12, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law in the prophets. So in everything, do to others as you would have them do to you. Really, he's saying, love your neighbors as yourself. Jesus would give these two great commandments later on. I believe it's in the book of Matthew later on. He would say, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And he would say, and love your neighbor as yourself. On these two hangs all the laws and the prophets. He took the 613 Levitical laws, all the rules of the Torah, and he summed it down to two. Love God, love people. And God is saying, look, he goes, if you love your own children, how much more does God love you who are his children? The scripture refers to us as his inheritance. If you dive into the word, I believe it's Exodus 33, Exodus 34, Moses is having a conversation with God and he's talking about how he doesn't want to go anywhere without God's presence and how the people won't move without God's presence. And he says, we need the whole, we need you with us so that the whole world can see that we're yours. He says, we are your inheritance. And I believe that his faith captured the heart. I believe that his faith really just captured God's heart. And God said to him, he said, I'll be with you. He said, I'll be with you. He, he promised his people, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll, I'll always be with you physically, and I'll never withdraw from you emotionally. That's what it means to I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He was not repeating himself. He was giving two different, two different statements. I'll be with you physically, and I'll be with you emotionally. God says, I'm with you. And really what Jesus is communicating to us about the Father is don't misread the Father. When you ask, when you seek, when you knock, when you go to God, he'll show up. Now, there's some things we have to understand. The scripture tells us to seek him and we'll find him. This is in the Old Testament, but it says you will find him when you seek him with your whole heart. We don't want to half-heartedly be seeking God. This is a principle that's found in the book of the prophets. We are to be seeking him with our whole heart. I believe it's in the book of Jeremiah. And it's continued principle-wise in the book of James in the New Testament. James would say, hey, when you ask, ask confidently. Actually, I'm going to dive there real quick. James 1, I think it's verse 6. We're going to dive into James 1. He says, but when you ask, you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord because such a person is double-minded and unstable in all that they do. I don't want to be unstable in my relationship with God. I want to ask him with the right heart, with the right attitude. I don't want to ask him selfishly. I want to ask him humbly. I want to ask him because I want to do things for him, not just for myself. And when I seek him, I want to seek him with my whole heart. 
I want to pursue him. I don't, I don't want to half-heartedly go after God. I want to wholeheartedly go after God. And I know because Hebrews tells us that we can boldly approach his throne. We can boldly approach his throne. We can have confidence to come before him in our time of need because he's a God of great grace. He's a God of great mercy who wants to lavish us. Ephesians 2, I believe, talks about how in the ages to come, he wants to show us his incredible kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. And it's such a beautiful picture seen in the scripture. And really, Jesus encapsulates this section of his sermon, this section of his message in Matthew 6, verse 13, with one more statement that I want to read to you if I can find it in my Bible. Matthew 7, excuse me, verse 13. Matthew 7, verse 13, we'll close with this. Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. You know, this is taught many different ways, but one of the most simple ways that this scripture is taught is that many roads lead to hell, but only one leads to heaven. And that's a very blunt and raw way to put it, but that's often how the scripture is explained um, there's only one way to the Father, and that's Jesus Christ. Jesus would say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. The narrow is the road. There's only one path, and it's God's way. Through his Son, Jesus Christ, the word that became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. But there's a lot of different options in this world. Wide is the path that leads to destruction. There are many different ways to destroy your future, to destroy your life, to introduce pain, shame, rejection, all the things that the enemy wants to bring. But there's one way that leads to life, and that's to love, pursue, and follow after Jesus Christ. And I would encourage you with this as we close. Love Jesus more than anything in this world. Put him first. Seek him. But don't just seek him. Seek him with your whole heart. There's this scripture that Jesus talks about in Matthew that really talks about money, but it also talks about our heart. It talks about how you can't serve two masters. You can't serve God and mammon. And mammon was the God of money. He was saying you can't serve two. You'll love the one and hate the other. You can either pursue God or you can pursue stuff. You can either pursue God or you can pursue the things of this world. It's our choice. I love how God said it in the Old Testament when he was talking to the children of Israel. He said, I call heaven and earth as witnesses before you. I set before you life and I set before you death. It's your choice. He said, but choose life. And here's the reality. He has set before us Christ. And then there's everything else. There's Christ, which is God's way. And then there's the world's way, there's culture's way, there's antichrist, which is the enemy, which is the devil's way. And he says, you can choose. I will not force you. But God's saying, look, take the narrow way. Take Christ, follow after Christ, ask him, seek him, knock, go after him, go after your father in heaven. Choose Christ and it will lead to life. John 10, 10, the enemy, the thief, comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He comes to steal, to kill, and destroy from your life. But Jesus said, I come that you might have life and life more abundantly. Choose life and life abundantly. Be blessed today.